What is going on guys? Welcome back to Ultimate Spider-Man issue 29 and this is actually where the awesome dark story kicks off and it does actually get quite dark and quite miserable both for Peter and Mary Jane's relationship but also for Gwen Stacy and of course for Spider-Man. It's like the three main characters really take a hit in this uh, part of the Ultimate Spider-Man series. So guys, without further ado, we're gonna jump into it. But first, for any of you guys that are just joining us, we are on a journey to review every single Ultimate Spider-Man comic from issue one all the way up to issue 133 and beyond. So if you're only just joining us, then welcome to these reviews and I hope you enjoy them. Now, without wasting any more time, guys, let's jump into it. Now, I really love the beginning of this specific comic because what actually happens is it does that thing, you know, similar to what movies or TV, well, mainly TV series, what they do, where they show, like, the action, you know, they show, like, this thing that's going on, like, right here, Ben Yurick from the Daily Bugle is actually at the bank and Spider-Man jumps in and starts to rob the bank. And I just love the whole figure, the way Spider-Man is drawn in this panel. He kind of reminds me of the 616 Spider-Man, the way he's drawn, but also from one of the Spider-Man video games, which I think is awesome. But what I was saying was, it shows like the action first, and then it shows like the ultimate Spider-Man title, and then it gets into the actual comic. Much like a TV series, I think it's a, I think is that what the Arrow TV series does, where it shows like the episode a bit first, and then the Arrow title comes up. I don't know, I can't quite remember, but I love it when things do that. And as you can see, Spider-Man starts beating the living crap out of the bank manager and he actually picks him up and throws him through one of the windows. And as you can see, this Spider-Man also has webs, so there is literally no reason to think that this isn't the real Spider-Man. But what you've got to remember is that Ben Yurick is also in the bank. He's there, he's a reporter, and he notices the finer details. And you can see that Spider-Man's shirt is untucked a little bit, so it's like not as unique as what it's supposed to be. And you can see there on the left, that his shirt and the bottom of his back is actually showing. Or is that the front of his stomach? I don't know. Either way, Ben Yurick notices this and knows that that is probably not the real Spider-Man. The real Spider-Man, of course, is Peter Parker and he would never do that. But also, Ben Yurick notices that this Spider-Man is kind of sloppy. He's kind of... Everything's a little bit off about him. There's not something quite right. And he goes back to the Daily Bugle and J. Jonah Jameson is ecstatic. He's just so thrilled that spider-man has turned out to be a criminal and he's going crazy he's like so happy i think this is the happiest i've ever seen jonah jameson but then ben yorick kind of brings the bricks down on him and says jonah i don't think that was the real spider-man he says he puts it perfectly he says that the real spider-man that was fighting doc ock had a certain grace about him. And I think that's the perfect word to describe Spider-Man. He's light on his feet. He's got a certain grace about him. There's a different attitude to him. But J. Jonah Jameson wants to print this story anyway. And this is actually going to backfire later on in the series because obviously when they find out that it's not the real Spider-Man, the Daily Bugle is going to be turned out to have obviously been selling the wrong news. And that's going to backfire on the Daily Bugle's newspaper sales and stuff like that. So... Not only is this going to affect Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane, and the Daily Bugle, but it's also going to affect J. Jonah Jameson himself with his newspaper business. So, this Spider-Man criminal doesn't actually get captured until issue 32. It's from this issue until issue 32, where all of these characters get put in the crossfire. They all get affected drastically, and we're going to see that play out. And it's actually one of the darker storylines so far, right before the Venom storyline, which is even darker. So I hope you guys are excited to get into that, but now Peter returns home, there's a police car outside his house again, and of course the last time that happened, Uncle Ben had been shot. So he runs into the house and he gets there and Gwen Stacy is actually lying there on the couch. And if you remember from the previous issue, the last time Peter saw Gwen Stacy, she was actually lying in a dumpster crying because her mother left and all this crazy stuff. So what could possibly have happened this time? Well, Gwen's mother is just up and left. She's gone now. And that leaves Captain George Stacy as a single parent. And of course, he's actually got to go away on some police business in Atlantic City. So he doesn't have anyone to look after Gwen. So Gwen's having to stay over at Peter's. And what I absolutely love is like this relationship between Aunt May and Captain George Stacy that's actually developing over time. It really seems like they could be at a dating stage, but... 
Like, it's really weird. I can't, it, it's actually really awesome to see. Like, in the movies, it would not make sense at all. But in this comic, I would actually love to see that happen. As you can see right now, Mary Jane is not happy with Gwen Stacy staying over. And she's becoming incredibly jealous of what's been going on. Like, Gwen going over to Peter's house at night. And now she's actually staying over. And all of this crazy stuff. Mary Jane actually doesn't trust Gwen just because she's kind of that bad girl type. And it's one of those things where... Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane become friends later on in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, but right now, Mary Jane is kind of on, like, the safeguard. She's kind of protecting what's hers and stuff like that. So, I kind of feel like Mary Jane is overreacting, in my opinion, but that's just girls for you, I suppose. I suppose it's different. Well, especially because the Peter Parker is Spider-Man, so she's got the stress of Peter being Spider-Man and being thrown off the bridge, all on top of this jealousy with Gwen Stacy. So, we'll see that play out in the future issues of Ultimate Spider-Man. But right now... Peter hears about that Spider-Man imposter robbing a jewellery store. So Peter heads out as Spider-Man, ready to go and save the day, ready to take this guy down. And there's a whole bunch of police guys, a bunch of police, news reporters, press, public. Everyone is outside this jewellery store shouting at Spider-Man to get out of the building with his mask off and his hands up. And of course, Peter, the real Spider-Man, turns up and says that he's there to help. He's actually going to take this guy down once and for all. And they all start shooting at him. And Peter actually gets shot in the shoulder. And of course, that is absolutely crazy. And I suppose what you've got to think about is that New York City is learning to accept Spider-Man as well. So when they see someone dressed up as Spider-Man robbing a jewelry store or causing a crime, they automatically assume that it is the real Spider-Man because they've never had a dedicated hero like him before. So they just assume that he's one day going to go off the rails, he's going to cause a crime. And when he does, they're going to take him down. So pretty much all of Spider-Man's reputation has been obliterated because of this guy that is robbing banks in his Spider-Man costume. And when I'm talking about New York City learning to accept Spider-Man as well, what I mean is that in the future Ultimate Spider-Man comics, you get like other people that put on the Spider-Man costume and New York City know that it's not the real Spider-Man doing these crimes, whereas right now it's the first time that this has happened. So they've yet to learn about all that, they've yet to learn to trust Spider-Man and know that he wouldn't do something like that. And that's really awesome to see New York City developing along with the other characters in this comic. But guys, what did you think of this issue? Of course, the ending right there was awesome and it was such an awesome cliffhanger as well. But what did you think of this issue? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm of course going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. The development over Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane is just as brilliant as how it is with Aunt May and Captain George Stacy. We're going to see a few more relationships break down and come out of this by the end of this whole secret identity crisis imposter saga, which ends in issue 32 slash 33. But until then, guys, go to the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook to get all the latest comic book news and updates, and also to hear about when I'm actually going to be editing these videos, when these videos are going to be uploaded, etc. Also, guys, if you want to know what I'm doing in my free time when I'm not editing these videos, then follow me on Instagram because I also do Instagram some of my comic book pickups, like my Civil War variants and stuff like that, so if you go check those out. Now, guys, if you want more, then hit the like button on this video, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you all in my next video.